I just wanted to go over my sound setup when I'm recording a screen capture. So the software that I'm using is QuickTime and I'm also using Sound Flower Bed and that's for the audio routing. So one of the problems that I've had in the past when I'm trying to record a screen capture and um, I want to record my sound output from say some audio software like Max MSP or Ableton uh, and I also want to narrate uh, so I want to be able to record the microphone at the same time and th there's a few problems come up and uh, things that I don't want to do I don't want to record the audio from the computer, the, the, the main output over the microphone, I want to be able to record it directly. I don't want to have to have external hardware, and I don't want to have to plug cables in from inputs and outputs, I just want to route it within the software and I, I don't want to have to deal with syncing audio up with the video afterwards, I just want to capture the, the screen and the audio simultaneously so I don't have to mess around editing the video afterwards. And it took me quite a while to work out how to do this. And one of the things that uh, you need to do is you need to change the microphone in QuickTime Player. So when you go to File, New Screen Recording, there's a little drop down on the, the right. I can't show you that now because obviously I'm using it and it actually vanishes the, the window. You can't, you can't actually see the window. Um, in the recording anyway, I can see it. But in there, you, you, you click the, the little drop down on the, on the right hand side and you can select the microphone or the input source. And in there, you want to select Soundflower, uh, the 64 channel one. So I've got Soundflower running. This is a free program from cycling74.com and it's just for routing audio between audio applications. And I'll just show you that in the in the taskbar there. So I'm using this 64 channel uh, bit here and I've assigned the, the built-in output to channel 1 and channel 2. All the other uh, channels on, on Soundflower 64 are not assigned to anything. And I'll just pull up my system preferences here and show you my sound. So my input is just my internal microphone. For output, I'm outputting to Soundflower uh, 64 channel. And I'll just show you Max MSP as well. And if we go to options and audio status, and here you'll see, again, the input device is the built-in microphone and the output device is Soundflower 64 channel. So I've got this little patch that I've made just for this purpose because another annoying thing, when I first started using Soundflower to uh, reroute my audio so that I could record myself at the same time as recording my main output using, uh, using QuickTime, uh, an annoying thing that occurred was that you'd be able to hear yourself talking as you're recording. So if you're wearing headphones and you're listening to the sounds that you're producing with a with a max patch or something, you're also having to listen to yourself echoing away in your head and it's um it's really annoying and, and it's it's really distracting as well uh, to be able to hear yourself talk while you're recording it. So this is the little solution I've come up with. I'll just show you this max patch here. It's really simple. So I've just got my, my audio input here and I've just got some gain sliders so I can change the levels a bit. And and then I've got a, a DAC here. And instead of passing the audio from the microphone to channels one and two, because remember this is a 64 channel sound driver for um, the sound flower bed, I'm actually passing the audio to channels three and four. And the great thing about QuickTime is when you set the microphone input to be uh, the Soundflower 64 channel is it will actually record all of the inputs. So I'm recording my voice now but I don't have to listen to it. Hooray! And uh, yeah and it I'll show you how it works um, or I'll show you it working. I'll just um, put that back where it was 
and let's pull up an audio tester and let's just pick a frequency that's less painful and oscillator so you should be able to hear what I can hear here 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 uh, the 220 hertz and we can even make it pulse the excitement faster pulses brilliant Okay, so that's really useful and another cool thing that you can do is you can actually record, uh, it, it will actually record the onboard MIDI synthesizer, uh, so just put the MIDI tester, right. I mean MIDI sounds on the, from the general MIDI synth that they don't sound great but you might want to record them for a tutorial. Uh, and it's annoying if you can't capture them, so... So there you go, that's my uh, sound setup, and I hope someone finds that useful.